Carl Brown from GuitarLessons365.com. Have a monster for you today. We're going to learn how to play Randy Rhodes' unaccompanied live solo from, uh, he did it in the middle of Suicide Solution on the Tribute album. It's always, when I was a teenager, man, I just loved it. Just loved it to death. Air guitar. I, probably, I played more air guitar to that solo, that whole album, than pretty much any album ever. Uh, so uh, many afternoons listening to that thing. Uh, so now we're going to learn how to play it. So it is a beast, so just bear with me here, but I'll take you through it note by note. Um, before I do that, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and ring the little notification bell as well, so you'll know when I get a, a new uh, release, a new video. For that notification bell to actually work, though, if you have a mobile device, you need to make sure it's set up to receive notifications from YouTube. Um, and then you'll really know whenever I release a new video. Um, and please check out my Guitar Academy, too. It's easy to go check out. You'll see the links in the description. It's at guitarlessons365.com. has all my guitar courses, live chats with me um, every week. Um, we've got a great community over there already. Um, and uh, just anything from ear training to guitar tone to improvisation, technique, it, it's all there. All right, so I hope that you'll check it out. All right, so let's get started here. Now, I'm in standard tuning here, and he's in standard tuning when he's recording this, I'm sure. Um, but when you listen to the recording, at least the version I was listening to off of, like, you know, a couple versions of, right on the web, um, it's, it's a little bit higher pitch. So it's slightly sharp in pitch. Um, I think this is just from uh, the process of when this was, you know, kind of made from, brought from tape into the digital world or whatever. Um, the tape got sped up a little bit. So what that means is the... Uh, the pitch of the recording is a little bit higher. So it, if you're trying to play this stuff along with it, it's not going to sound that great because he's a little bit sharp unless you retune your guitar or get throw get a recording and throw it into some software so you can uh, kind of bring it back down. All right, so live, and not actually, he might actually be playing exactly quite as fast as on the recording because of that. When you speed up the tape, obviously it's going to speed up the performance. So, um, but anyway, that's what it is. But I'm sure live, it's, it's in standard tuning. So let's uh, get to work here. We've got a lot to check, a lot of notes to learn. Uh, but the great thing about Randy Rose playing, a lot of the stuff is very kind of, uh, the same licks kind of sequenced down, so it's kind of fun to play. All right, so we're gonna start with this little uh, legato thingy. So it looks like this. <laughs> All right, so this is that's the first kind of lick we need to get. And it's the first time he plays it is a little bit different than the rest of the, the times he plays it. So the first time he plays it here, you're going to have a slight palm mute going on down here. Uh, you're going to pick the fifth fret, pull off the three, and hammer back on to five. And then you're going to pick um, the third fret there. Um, on the A string. All right, so that's the first time he plays it. So you can see that there's just a little. But then the rest of the time he, uh, he plays it, he's going to do it twice as long on the A string, on the low E string, sorry. So we're going to go. So we're going to do a couple of hammer and pulls. And then you hit that note on the A string. So the first time, and then all the rest. Once he gets it uh, together, he does it about seven times. And then he takes the same lick and moves it over to these, the A and the D string. And just does it a couple times. So we have this of our. So a couple times here. All right, so now we, we, we're gonna continue with this part that kind of sounds like this. lot of stuff in there but there's some licks in there that we can grab and just kind of repeat and that makes it a lot easier than it sounds so we're gonna take now we're gonna come up shift up so after we've done this little legato lick twice there jump up to the fifth fret on the A string and you're gonna do a quick trill just um, on between five and seven on the A string so just a couple 
All right. And then we're going to continue across the strings. And what we're going to... What he, what he does, he does a quick little down up down and then a trill. And he is going to do that on the D string and then the G. And then he goes to the B string. So from this trill here, all right, did they do the same thing there on the B? Except here, you're not going to do a trill, you're going to go into the next lick. So from this B string here, so that's that quick little three hits there on the, you're going to hammer on eight, pull back up to five, over to this, uh, making it a blues scale here, the eighth fret there on the G, up to the fifth fret there on the high E, and then pull off eight to five on the B. So it, I'm sorry. So from up here, I'll go through all this slowly. All right, now he's going to start picking a little bit more. Sorry. Does that lick twice, which is just five, eight five seven five on the high E, and then you're gonna pull off eight to five on the B. So you're gonna do that twice. All right. So from from there. We're gonna do this uh, from this, this pull off here. You're gonna do a hammer and pull off from five to six on the B, over to eight on the G, and then back to that five on the B string. Now this is kind of the start of this lick. So I want you to get used to this. Now we're going to take this in. You're basically going to slide down to the so I like this. Actually, you can just kind of slide into the four if you want. And then do that hammer on, pull off again, over to seven on the D, back to that uh, four on the G. So that's kind of. So to kind of get into that, you're going to want to go like this. So I did that little lick. So I'm really trying to get you to see this lick right here. And then we're going to pull off 8 to 5 on the G. And then what you're going to do is when you slide down to that 4, you're going to start that lick again. Try this. And then we're going to do, we're going to take this on the seventh fret there, back down to the D string there, slide down to five, and then we're going to do that lick again here at the two, and roll on three, pull off to two, and then over to the five on the A string, and back to that two on the D. So you can see how it's that same. So after you've done that lick one time there, you're gonna go, you're gonna go back down to the uh, five, three, and two on the A string, and then go back up. So we have this. You see how it kind of you pick those and it was really heavily palm muted, and then you do the lick again right where you did it before. So so far we have this. All 
All right, and now all we're going to do is go back down the A string, that 5-3, and then do that same familiar lick here. So that's that hammer of 2 to 3 on the A string, pull back off the 2, over to 5 on the low E, back to that 2, and then just go 5-3-2 on the low E to end it. So after we got up here, Alright, so uh, that has got a lot of crazy stuff in it as well. Alright, the next phrase sounds like this. Alright, so it's got some bluesy licks in there and um, some, you know, some crazy fast stuff. A lot of legato. So we're going to start here with a big slide. And then we're going to go into this. So we're going to start here by going 5, 6, 7 on the A string. Back to over to 5 on the D and then pull off 7, 5 on the A. So, so you're basically going to do that a couple times. Maybe a few times. And then we start doing that kind of, uh, kind of some trills across the string on the D string there. And there's a really quick little. So that's a quick hammer on to the G. Then you're gonna roll five on the B to five on the high E. Now some people will slide that. Uh, but you can tell when he actually does the slide is into this 10 here, so it's not into the 9. So you got to do it down here. So we have this. So we did that. That little starting lick like three times. And then a quick little trill there on the D string, and then into that fast little cross string lick. Is hammer on 5, 7 on the G. Five uh, across the B and the high E. Now we slide up. So that's sliding into the 10th fret on the B string, over to the 8th fret on the high E string. Then you're going to pick 11 and pull off to 10 and 8. So this. Over to 10 again on the B string, back to that 8, and then you're going to pull off 10-8 on the B string. Alright, so we have this. Now we get to the part where he starts moving up the fretboard. He does this really, really quickly. So what he does is you just... You're at, you pull, just did that 10 8 pull off. You're going to slide from 9 to 11 on the G. And then play. You're going to hammer on 10 to 12, pull back off to 10. Then we're going to do the same lick. We're going to slide into the 13th fret, though. I'm oh, sorry, slide into the 14th on the G. And then play. do the hammer 13 to 15, pull back off to 13. So All right, and then what we're going to do is we're going to kind of slide up the G string again. And we have that little uh, legato lick, which is going to, you're going to start with just a hammer on from the 17 to 20 on the B, over to 17 on the high E. But then from then on, we're going to just pull, pick 20 on the B, pull off to 17, hammer back on to 20. And then go and hit that 17 there on the high E. So it's a four note lick once you get into it. So that's the first three notes, and then from then it's just. Alright, so he, he, he does that for, you know, uh, about 
I don't know, 23,000 times. And then to some bends now at the 20th fret on the high E string. And then he has a slightly different lick. So it's another four note lick, but it's, this one is hammering on uh, 17 to 20 on the high E. Pull back off to 17, over to 20 on the B. So we have this. So you do that a few times. So. All right, so after we have played that lick a few times on the high E and the B, but when we get down to the B string, we have this kind of cool little bluesy lick, which looks like this. All right, so uh, some really cool stuff in this. So what that's going to be is just going to pick uh, 20 and pull off to 17, slide down to 16, hammer back on to 17, pull back off to 16. So that's the beginning. And you're going to double that note by just pulling off 20 to 19 to 17 on the G. All right, so we have this. Then you're going to pull off 19 to 17 on the G, then over to 19 on the D, and then back to that 17 on the G. So a little four note lick there. So it is. That's right. And then you're going to play 1917 on the D, and then 1918 17 on the A. Slide down now to 16, and while you hold that, you're going to pick the 19th fret with it on the D string. Let those two ring together. All right. Getting through it. Next lick, some crazy legato -y slash picking licks. Sounds like this. All right, the next lick is my favorite one, but uh, we'll wait on that. So there are there's uh, some patterns in here though too, so it's not all chaos. So we're gonna start here with um, hammering on a one, two, picking one, and we're on two, four. On the low E. Now you're gonna play the same notes on the A, but you're gonna pick them all. So this is like, it's a, ha it's a three note hammer, three note pick. And then we're gonna kinda of do the same thing picking wise, but we're gonna do the one, two, four hammer on the D string. And then pick just the same sequence of notes, just three, four, six on the same D string. So we have this. Now let's take the same thing here um, of at the third fret. Hammer three, four, six. Right, pick three, hammer four, six. Then pick three, four, six on the A. Do the hammer now version of it. Three, four, six on the D. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna jump up to the G string and pick five, six, eight. So. I'm sorry. So it's kind of just the same one, two, four fingerings that he's doing this kind of lick across. Uh, now what he does is he does it, starts it at the sixth fret on the uh, D string. So you're gonna, um, so you're gonna just, he doesn't do the full pattern here. He, he hammers six, uh, seven, nine, and then pick six and hammer just seven on the G. Now, the reason why he stops the pattern there is he's got to jump up here and do this. So he does this. After this little hammer on from six to seven, you're going to go pick 10, pull off the seven, hammer eight, pull off the seven. 
Then do the same thing on the high E string. Alright, so what we're going to do now is we're going to work our way back down. So we kind of have a little bit of a different lick here. So we're just going to work our way after we got to... Kind of did that lick as before. Kind of just hammer, pull off 10, 8, 7 there. And what you're going to do when you get here is you're going to get to the ninth fret on the G slide down to uh, the 7, and this is really where the pattern starts here. So the pattern is going to be pulling off uh, 7, 5, 4, over to, um, sorry, sorry, just pull off 7, 5, 4, sorry, and then pull off 5-4 again, over to 7 on the D, so, and then maybe end it with that 4 on the G, it's kind of quick stuff, yeah, like that, and then we do the same thing here. So that's that, pull off 7, 5, 4 on the D, then pull off 4, 5 again, over to 7 on the A, and back to that 4. And now do the same thing uh, down here, 5, 3, 2 on the A, pull back off to 3, 2, over to 5 on the uh, low E, back to that 2 on the... Um, on the a, a string. So it's that like same little lick. So after you get here, you can just go into that melody, which is that four on the D string, five on the G, and um, seven on the B. Then we have a really cool diminished lick, which sounds like this. This really does a lot of diminished here. So, um, what this lick is... So it's kind of a repeated thing. Uh, it starts with a pull-off. So you're going to start this right here, pulling off 10 to 7 on the B string. And then you're going to pick the rest of the notes in the, in the pattern. And actually, from, from now on, I'm just going to alternate pick everything with a lot of palm muting. So what the pattern is, is you're going to pull off first 10 to 7. That's the only time you're going to do a pull off, though. Over to 8 on the, B, uh, the G string. Then back to the 7 on the B string. Then shift back and play 8, 5 on the G. So really that's the pattern, except now we're going to pick everything. And since uh, we don't have to deal with the different tuning between the B and the G, um, we're going to have, uh, everything's going to repeat the same here. So the next one is this. So, so what we're doing there is we're going to uh, play 8 to 5 on the G. So we just played that, right? So that was the last, that 8-5, we're going to repeat that to start the next sequence. Over to 7 on the D, then back to the 5 on the G, then shift back just one fret and play 7-4 on the D. So that's the pattern. So it's a 6 note pattern, so that's what you want to practice. And then we basically, so where you just finished, now you start the next pattern. So 7, 4 on the D, 6 on the A, back to that 4 on the D, and then 6, 3. So shift down, just like this. Again. And then again. So 
from here. Pretty cool stuff. The next one looks like this. there. All right, so this one is more diminished stuff, uh, but a little bit easier to play if you can play trills. Um, we're going to hammer on 5-8 uh, on the low E, then just move up a fret and hammer 6-9 on the A. Let's do it again, hammer in 7-10 on the D, and then one more time here, 8-11 on the G. And then you're going to move it here to 10 and 13 on the B string, but when you get there, you're going to start a trill. And then move it that trill to 11, 14 on the high E. Then you can move it up three frets to 14, 17. And then move it up three more frets to 17, 20. And then you're going to pick 17, slide up to 20, and then pick 21 there on the um, high E string with it. So. All right, and now we just have a little A power chord, and then a G power chord, and then a D power chord with the A string and the bass. Now here, I can't do what happens there. He has his guitar set up. I'm imagine since there's a lot of whammy bar in this, that he's probably playing this on his Flying V, even though I've seen like rehearsal footage uh, or, or kind of sound check footage where he's playing a lot of these licks in this solo and he's doing it on his Les Paul. Uh, but especially towards the end, there's some really pretty intense um, um, kind of bar dives, so I'm thinking maybe he's doing the flying V for this actual solo. But the, uh, uh, what was I doing? I lost my train of thought. Anyway, so when we're, when we, when he gets to this part, he has his pickup set on his guitar to where the volume on his neck pickup is turned to zero. And then the volume on his bridge pickup is turned, you know, all the way on. So then when he switches back and forth between the bridge pickup and the neck pickup, it sounds like the volume, he can create this little da 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 where the volume goes out. It's like a kill switch, which there's some guitars that have like a kill switch, you know, on it um, that you can do those effects with anyway. But that effect right there, that little rhythm effect, you have to have a guitar that you can turn the, you can, uh, you know, control the volume for each pickup, and I don't have that. So, but that is what's going on there. And then we go into my uh, probably my favorite part of the solo, very melodic, very cool section. Sounds like this. All right. So that is going to start with a slide into the sixth fret on the D string. And then play seven, four, six on the G. So that is uh, four, two on the G. Then I'll hammer pull one and two on the G. Over to four on the D. And then slide two to four on the A. Look at this. All right, then three, six, seven. Play three, six, pick six again, and hammer on to that seven there on the D. Then play six, four on the D. Jump back to this F sharp with the second fret on the low E string. Then we have this little palm muted lick. So that is going to be the fifth fret on the uh, low E, then play two, three, four on the A string, over to four on the D. So we have this. Um, um, 
All right, now we start these little arpeggios that are really cool. Even though that's not the hardest part of the solo to play, it's probably the biggest head turner because it just sounds really cool. So some heavy palm muting so you can make those notes pop out. You're going to slide into the fifth fret of the A. You're going to kind of uh, pick across a D major arpeggio here. So slide into that fifth fret of the A, four on the D, two on the G, and then um, three on the uh, B string. So slide up to the eighth fret. When you pick that second fret on the, the B, slide to the eight on the B. Then play ten on the high E string. I'm sorry, ten, seven. Do as I play, not as I say. Uh, seventh on the high E. Over to 10 on the B. So we have this. Sure. Just skip up here to the ninth fret there on the G now. 9 on the G, 11 on the D, uh, 12 on the A. Then we play 11 on the A and then 9 on the D and the G. So we have this. So, from there, so, so when you get the high E string, ten, 12, 10, 9, to uh, 10 on the D, to 9 on the uh, G strings. So let me play through this. Like when you when you do this stuff so slow, it's kind of hard to keep it in your hands. Yeah, we got it. So so ten on the B, nine on the G. Slide down to eight and start doing a trill between eight and nine. And real quick in there, he adds a, he'll, he'll add the eleventh fret there. Like so, you're kind of trilling on to the eight, the eleventh. Kind of does it once, so it kind of looks like this. And then when he kind of pulls off, he's going to hit that open G and the B string together to kill it. All right, so that whole section. All right, then we get to the next phrase. All right, not as crazy as it sounds. So we're gonna slide up the G string there. Whenever I say something like that, I always get comments. I don't know why, I can't figure it out. Anyway, so when we get up there, we're gonna do that same lick that we did earlier. That uh, was kind of at the very beginning. Transitioning to the other legato lick up there as well. So, I think you'll know what I mean there. And then it, it does a quick tw 2019 uh, 17 little kind of tremolo pick part. And does it a couple times. And then he gets into the actual lick that is repeated here. So what's going on? We're going to play 21 and then 18 17. It's kind of an interesting uh, interval choice there. And then he takes that and he picks that all the way down one fret at a time. So you get to the fifth fret. So you, like a whole octave. So we have to. All right. So that's. Not the easiest thing in the world to play, but it's pretty easy to understand since it's the same thing just taking down the string. All right, so now we get to a very, very cool section. And the, this is a, a legato section that almost sounds like tapping and, and it eventually becomes tapping. But before that, it sounds like this. And right here it becomes tapping. 
So now I believe when he's doing this, he's not doing any picking. There's not a lot of pick noise. Now when I pick like the first note of each pattern, I get that little scrapey noise, that, that, that little kind of ice picky sound. So I hate it. So I instead of doing that, I just do it without it. So his sounds so smooth that I believe he's probably doing it like that as well. So um, plus it looks cool, you know. So let's uh, talk about what's going on. It's very simple three note pattern. You're going to hammer on the pinky of the seventh fret on the high E. Now, by the way, you're going to be wanting to mute all the other strings there. And since you can't do any uh, left hand muting or fret hand muting, you gotta really get that palm on that B string close to the E. So it's not the easiest thing in the world to do. You can maybe just put a finger on it if you want. So right there we have, uh, I'm hammering seven, pull off the four, and pull off to the open E. So you do it four times. And then just move it up one fret and eight, five, still pulling off the opening. So go back and forth between those two, uh, so you're doing it four times each. Then you're going to take the same lick and you're going to be doing it from 12, 8 to the open. And then 10 and 7 to the open. And then back to the 8 and 5. And then the 7 4. So it. Okay, a little string training exercise there. Now we're going to move it over to the B string. And when you do this, you're going to want to mute. I usually kind of just, you know, I have my palm in the lower strings, put my pick against the G string there, and then I put my uh, middle finger uh, on my picking hand on the high E string. That way I can have full reign on this B string and don't, don't worry about any kind of string noise uh, around it. So I'm muting all the strings around it so we don't have to worry about anything. Then we're back to the same lick at the 12 and 8 0 on the, on the B string. 10 and 7 0. 8 5 0. And then when we take it down to 7 and 4 here on the B is where I'm going to start tapping. All right, so so far we have this. All right, now the tapping pattern, uh, you know, it's not the it's pretty it's not the most consistent thing in the world. Uh, but it's pretty easy to get the sound of it. So all I'm going to be doing is the kind of this simple tapping pattern where we're going to tap the note here at the 12th fret, um, pull off to 7, pull off to 4, hammer back on to 7. So that little, that little 4 note pattern and then just repeat. And then you're going to move up, you're going to keep tapping 12 but you can move up to 5 and 8 in the left hand. And then what you're going to do is you're going to jump up to 9 and 12 in the left hand and 17 in the tapping. And then just once again move the left hand up a half step. So we have this. Alright, so you're not hanging out very long on each one. Then move up to 20 in the tapping and 20 and 12 and 15 in the, on the B string. All right, and then up to 22 in the tapping, 13 and 17 in the left hand, and then make it 13, 18 in the left. With this, and then 21 on the tapping and 14, 17 in the left. So all together for the tapping. Then you're going to hit the A string. Add the 
bar dive and then back up with a low E. And then what you're gonna do is hit the harmonic at the fifth fret on the G string. So. Now, uh, like I said, whether he's doing that with his Les Paul and bending the neck, or which he was really good at too, or, or doing it on the flying V, I, I have no clue. All right, so then we're gonna get to the end of this stuff with some crazy, crazy fast um, alternate picking. Sounds like this. <laughs> So I have kind of an unorthodox way of picking uh, pentatonic stuff like that. I like to start with an upstroke. Just kind of works out for my hands, I don't know why. But So basically, this is a pretty simple pattern just played at a crazy fast speed. So he's heavily palm muting this, and he's going to be picking 7-5 on the uh, G string over to 7-5 on the D. And like I said, I'm doing up, down, up, down. If you, whatever feels better for you, you want to do down, up, down. Or. All right, so the, that's the first four notes. And then we kind of repeat the pattern, except it's going to be 8, 5 on the G. Still 7, 5 on the D, though. Let's try this. And just repeat that. All right, now from there we have this. So right here, just like eight, five on the G, seven, five on the G. So we kind of mixed it up there. So we have this. And then. Sorry. One so after you've done that pattern twice that we did earlier, then we have. Uh, eight five seven five on the G, and then that seven five on the D. So so far. And then we're gonna end the pattern by going seven five on the G again, seven five on the D, and then that eight five version of it. So it's kind of like the same lick done uh, three times. But in between the second and third time, we have that little variation. So like this. Once, twice, variation, and then, and then that lick played one more time. And then you're gonna take it to the eighth fret and repeat the same thing. All right, so these together, up to speed. All right, so yeah, it's crazy fast. All right, now we get a little bit easier. Uh, we're gonna play, it's still fast, I don't even know what I'm saying. So we have uh, 14, 12 on the D, G string, then 14, 12 on the, um, the D string. And then uh, once again, the, 15-12 on the G, and 14-12 on the D. So we're going to take that pattern, which we did, before, we did before, but here. And then after, as we do it, we're going to move it up a fret each time. So we started at 12, and now 13, 14, 15, 16. And when you get to the 17th fret, you're just going to do the first set of four notes into that bend at the 20th fret on the B. So we have this. All right, and then it's a little pre-bar dive. So you're going to have the bar dipped a little bit and then hit the G string. It up, same thing on the D, and then the third fret on the low E, same thing. And back to the 
song. All right, so very, very cool solo, extremely challenging, got some really melodic parts to it, uh, great legato licks, great picking licks. Uh, man, just an insane player that we lost way, way, way too early. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'm going to be doing a lot more Randy Rhodes uh, in the near future on the channel because I think uh, it's, it's missing a lot of... Uh, his stuff so um, I'm gonna fix that and I wanted to start with this one because I think this one is just a beast all right I'll see you guys soon for guitar lessons 365.com <laughs>